Are you ready for the Low Bros Network? Don't. What? It's the show where you control <laughs> what's on the what, agenda. What? Oscar said it. What'd you, you, what you speak to, to tell me to speak? Speaking over the now. intro. But you're also speaking over the intro. Don't. This, we've got to stay quiet for this, man. But, well, I mean, we've already so fucked so it, so we just... Right. We just accept that this is where we're at now, and then start the Speak show. Speak now! Oh, well, I mean, I'm already speaking, so I guess we'll just start from here. Is that cool with you? Will we start from here? <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> lads, there is no flagship show this week, which means we're going to skip all the wrestling that happened over the last seven days. It never happened. We're going to delete it, uh, highlight it, and delete it, and uh, go on to your questions. No, I want to that. I want to that. Right. Because there's something major happened on Raw. Two major things happened in wrestling, one on Raw, that I need to talk about. Because the man came back. The hero. Many call him the greatest wrestler of all time. I know I do. Big Bobby Lashley coming back. <laughs> fucking Rusev's wife. A proper alpha dog move. Bobby Lashley doing whatever it is he wants to do. I love him two bits. This man. Like, her- <laughs> Dan, you see Hurricane's tweet about this? No. <laughs> right. Where are we at? Uh, here it is. <laughs> Yo, Bobby Lashley. If I ever catch you making out with my woman, well... I guess that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and that just shows how dominant and how fucking kill Bobby Lashley is. Lads, Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush are both back in WWE before before this whole wrestling war or whatever is taking place and they've won. <laughs> like, just on that alone. But, you know, well, what do you think? <laughs> I, like, I sneaky loved this moment this like it was random and it was shy and i want to give it i want to give a shout out to i want to give a shout out as well to colin from work um who we had a big debate last week about his theory behind whether Rey mysterio would uh, win the title this week on raw which was instantly blown to pieces by brock coming out and destroying him and dominic um which like i did do parts on raw that i actually loved um because like they were like old school wrestling because that's that's kind of what we liked about WWE at its peak, where random shit would just happen, and then you're like, "Well, I guess I have to tune in next week to see why that makes sense." <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if I liked it or I hated it, but I'm definitely watching and going, "What the fuck?" Um, I thought it was hilarious because it was just a mean moment. Maybe it's because I'm hanging around with you so much that <laughs> I just like these shit things now, and it's just I appreciate that. Um. I thought it was fucking hilarious uh, coming out. And as well, the way it was so shit. And, like, it was such a big moment for Raw. Like, it's like, this is the start of the AEW war. AEW air in two days. You have to come out and do something strong. We have to really go out and make a statement. And, like, okay, they started off with Brock beating the shit out of Rey Mysterio. And then Dominic, okay, I get it. That's cool. That's different. That's unexpected, obviously. Um, but it's like, uh, th- then at the end of it, it just... I loved how shit it was because it's like they just kept playing Lana's music really quietly behind it and then they just kept kissing more and more passionately and then like they just nearly started riding like do you remember when he just opened their legs on the stage and like like it would go I, I didn't get to see this it, I literally on here, I'm on here about like it got very sexual very fast like she started like wrapping her legs around him but then he started like kind of arching it as if he was like in a nightclub jacks, come on Bobby like. <laughs> yeah and it got really sexual at one stage and then Rusev is just watching it but not like even like angrily he's like a fucking cook he's like got this dead expression on his face like he's kind of into it you know what i mean like he's in his own little rusev trance like it was so fucking random that i found it like it it, like it got really shit but then it kept happening so then it got good again (laughs) i found it fascinating what were your own thoughts i just found it unbelievable like (laughs) i like the reason and I've gone the other way. Like, Rusev has a new mustache, and it's like peak attractiveness. He's okay. at the most attractive stage he's ever been at his life. Now is not the time to run away with Bobby Lashley. <laughs> it's always time to run it's, away with Bobby Lashley. It's not like, it like is, Rusev is giving off them like 70s porn star vibes, and I'm really into it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I really like as well in hindsight? The fact that we know it was all building towards this where it was like, the, you know, when Rusev came back, like the commentators just kept adding this random bit in, which we now know was foreshadowing. Where we're like, but I think everyone's wondering, where's Lana throughout all of this? And we're like, we weren't. <laughs> we're like, we're, I actually never thought about Lana once. I forgot she was married to him. <laughs> I'm like, and it's just like they kept doing it in the backstage. It's like the commentator, like during the night, the backstage interviewer just turns around to Rusev and he's like, but I think everyone's wondering where's lana and he's like i don't want to talk about my problems at home and i'm like 
Oh, lads, whatever you're doing, you're doing it really obviously in <laughs> Hammy. And then I'm like, turns out it wasn't obvious. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think this main event was going to end. I didn't think that the advertised Rey Mysterio Seth Rollins match was going to end with Bobby Lashley nearly having sex with Lana on stage while Rusev watched calmly. Um, <laughs> but I guess in hindsight, you know, it was staring us in the face the entire time. <laughs> what else was going to happen? Like, I'd, where's Total Divas going? That's what I want to know. Like, is there a marital problem that's going to be on Total Divas that comes oh. back this week? Is, you know... What what's happening there? <laughs> Are they really doing a main event storyline where six months down? Because in a way, like <laughs> you'd see a random tag team match on Raw, and then like on Total Divas, they'd make sense of it. It's like, oh, that's why they fought yeah, on Raw. Yeah. That's why Summer Rae and Natalia had a blood feud because it was part of a total. Are they really doing this with a main event story? <laughs> like, total, no, yeah. Total Divas so funny because it'd be like Natalia versus Rosa Mendez on main event, and like it'll cut to the crowd, and they're just like, yeah. <laughs> 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 With like the WrestleMania side yeah. of the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, cl- it's clearly the WrestleMania set. Like. <laughs> so good. Yeah. But the peak of the wrestling week was not raw. It's fair to say. The one thing that I'm talking about. Fuck, I don't care if not everyone's talking about it. I'm talking about it. Because it's now, you know, we're talking about who's, what side are you on the war? Are you on Team NXT, Team WWE? Are you on Team AEW? I'm on Team NWA. <laughs> Oh my you are. fuck. I don't want to re- talk about it too much because I'm saving it for next week. There's so much I want to say. I'll just say Trevor Murdoch, my best friend Melina, <laughs> fucking Mr. Kennedy, <laughs> <laughs> fucking the, the, basically they put a picture up of their roster, go up, look at it, let me know what you think. I'm going to be talking about it next week. It's uh, NWA is going to be something mad. <laughs> and like the, the, the best title in all of wrestling. I'll get to it next week. It's just mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, you're pretty hyped. Yeah. What's What's the story? So, like, I guess we couldn't do the show because what was it? There's like all the cool shit is happening. Like, not now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Next like, week. yeah, it's all like we're kind of in the dead week. So, like, well, no, it's, we're in the middle of the week as it's just about to happen. Now, yeah. Right? Exactly. So it's like AEW and NXT is what like in a few hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. like SmackDown's on Friday, and you know, um, Hell in a Cell Sunday too. It's kind of going on. What? The radar. Yeah, Hell in a Cell Sunday. That being said, like, Raw was deadly this week. Yeah. What I've seen of it, like, I know we can't fill an entire flagship show with it, no. but, like, I'm excited for Hell in a Cell because, like, we didn't talk about how Raw ended. That was class. Oh, The Fiend. With The Fiend. Yeah. Like, just basically making Seth Rollins shit himself. Like, that <laughs> was fantastic. Yeah. I'm really excited for it. Uh, like, uh, yeah, like, so The Fiend is, like, is he jobbing Rollins out Sunday? Like, I think so. And yeah. I was laughing because did you see Mick Foley's tweet during the week? What? This is going to be my hot take for this week. Okay. Where he had the poster for Hell in a Cell up, which is just The Fiend's face. And he was like, you know, like, I think going into this, Becky and Sasha have the biggest feud. And I really think they should main event on Sunday. <laughs> what? does everyone else think and literally it was just 400 polite replies of people being like um, no Mick I'm going to disagree with you here on this one <laughs> oh <my laughs> God. But like, it Mick. wasn't like an argument or anything but literally I think there was two people agreeing with Mick Foley in this entire thread right oh. and I was kind of like yeah Mick like I know you're a very strong like you know supporter of women's wrestling and but like this is this is the fiend's time. Yeah. Like, let's, let's not pretend anyone else should be main event in this pay per view. Let's not pretend he's not going to do a lot of cool shit. Yeah. And I was like, you know, the girls are doing well. They're still having their hell in a cell match. It's still historic, but this is the fiend's thing. It's, 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 yeah, it's not. Don't don't be white knight now. But, but <laughs> the cast thing was he tweeted he quote tweeted the next day and just being like, so after reading all four hundred replies, it seems I'm wrong. So I've rethought my stance and I think the fiend should main event. <laughs> I was like, oh, backtracking big time. Ah, no, but I respect. At least he's like, yeah, fuck it, I was wrong. So there's a payoff, you know, kind of way. Did any of you see the little, st- the little subliminal messages they're doing with the fiend on Fox? Yeah, it's yeah. Fucking, have you seen this? I've seen, seen the reaction videos. No. So someone put up a reaction video and. Um, to non-wrestling fans watching it are you talking about the ones where his face flashes yeah, up really yeah. quickly and they had a reaction video of someone who doesn't watch wrestling and he flashes up and she goes what the fuck is that what the fuck is that <laughs> and she's freaking out like and I was nice. like imagine not being a wrestling fan and seeing that like it grabs you though doesn't it it does because yeah. it's like he's literally taking out like this during football and stuff like that they just randomly have the fiend face pop up and it's fucking awesome like it happened during Raw and it scared the shit out of me like and it's literally <laughs> like it's like they ju- and they just didn't acknowledge it like it, I think it just I I don't know if it even happened on a commercial break. I can't remember now. But, like, I think it just happened in the middle of a show. Like, in between segments. And it's just like, Rah! And then it's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> Real exorcist-style stuff. That's what they do all the way through that. 
and he looks legit scary as well. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you see it with that, you see it with, like, we're used to it now, but, like, you see it with, like, casual eyes. Do you know what I mean? Because you're seeing it in a position you don't expect to see it in. So it's fucking cool. Like, yeah, no, I'm all in. And, like, but here's the thing. We're completely ignoring it. Like, hell in a cell. Like, it's yeah. a really big thing. Smackdown on Fox as well. Like, it's that, I'm really pumped for it. I'm staying up on Friday. Are we staying up? Fuck no. <laughs> really? I'm not staying up for like, I, like I, I'm really, I hate staying up for like, stuff. Especially if it's like, there's ads and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't even have Fox, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's on Sky. What? It's on Sky. I don't have that either. Alright. <laughs> so I was like, I have to stream it, and then it's also like, just, I, I just don't like staying up for wrestling, that's like the Royal Rumble of WrestleMania. I find it way too tiring, like, right. I don't enjoy it. Because it's like, oh, this actually, I was thinking this the other day on the bus, right? Everything is a step down if I'm watching it live and I'm really tired and miserable. So it's like something that's good is all right. Something that's all right is bad. Something that's bad is shit. And something that's amazing is pretty good. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, I might as well just enjoy it in full, you know? Okay. But it is, I do agree. It's going to be mad, though. I do think it's... It'll probably... I'd say if you're, if you're someone who can stay up for wrestling, it'd be worth it. Like, yeah. Rowan's going to be there. I mean, oh. and, and he's going to get his revenge on The Rock. It's going to be amazing. Do you think that's where it's gonna go? I think I think it's where it's gonna go. That's a bald headed show. Rowan's also bald, but like he can get away. Because Harper was involved in that too. Oh man! Okay, Ashton White stay up for it. He's gonna be up the rock. (gasps) The Rock and Roman Reigns are related. (laughs) (laughs) He just stood up. He just stood up. Oh my god, Roman's gonna be up the rock. Roman's gonna be up the rock. Roman is gonna beat the shit out of the rock. All right, it's happening. happening. Maybe that's not like maybe it's. Maybe it's going there. He's going to beat the fuck out of Rock. But I think they're all good. He's definitely going to be in that segment. Like. I hope you stay up now and it doesn't happen. And the Rock just introduces us like, Welcome to Smackdown. Oh, you can stay up for after Friday. Anyway, back to holiday. After after Friday, so you yeah. can stay up as well. Oh. Yeah, that's what I mean. You can, you can stay up now. Yeah, but I thought you stayed up on like Mondays and stuff and weird shit. Oh, I know. <laughs> fuck that noise. <laughs> um, oh, Christ. man. No, oh, my God. Ooh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. What time is it on? One? One. One. And it's two hours as well. And there's a lot to it. Like, you got the Kofi Brock match. You've got the ladder match with Shane and KO. You've got the Rock, whatever they're going to do there. Like, there's a lot. And then I there's thought KO and Shane was that Hell in a Cell. Oh, it's that SmackDown. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's the a ladder, ladder match. match. Yeah, Have yeah. they built SmackDown bigger than Hell in a Cell? Yeah. yeah. They barely mentioned Hell in a Cell. Like, on, on, on Raw. They barely mentioned it. They mentioned everything else. They plugged NXT more than they plugged Hell in a Cell. Uh, they started plugging Saudi Arabia. Yeah, crowd. Oh. What did you, what did you think of that? Because I think we disagree on that. Yeah, like okay, I don't want to see Hulk Hogan back in my telly, right? right. I, he, you know, he's a old racist, but like the crowd. I just love the crowd reaction when him and Ric Flair started yeah. like teasing that interaction. You know, I just I hadn't seen them that like pop that big in in ages, and yeah. then I got excited, and then I watched it back twice, and then Phil came in, and he's like, "Is that Ric Flair?" And I'm like, yeah, it is. And then like it was just a whole excitement thing, but like it was really well done. I like I yeah like I I I enjoyed that part too. I did notice that the crowd were genuinely hot for everything that were happening. They were like so it surprised me that in 2019 because like straight up like a lot of wrestling fans that are making up kind of the 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 hotter end of the crowds like the the full sales the NXT takeover crowds they're not big on nostalgia like do you remember how Raw kind of reunion got shit on a couple of months ago they're not big nostalgia people it doesn't get over as much as it did so I was it was cool to see like as soon as they said as soon as Hogan said well let me tell you something brother which we've seen a hundred times since he was relevant do you know what I mean the crowd were like yeah <laughs> I was like okay that's cool but like also as well they were very old. Like they were like Rick it. Rick just kept like interrupting the maze, but like in an old man way. <laughs> like he kept forgetting his lines and forgetting his cues, like and then he's like uh like he's trying to set stuff up, but Miz obviously has to come in and then Hogan's like, Yeah, you're the greatest of all time, Rick. It's good to be back and then obviously what they're doing is Miz is gonna ask him a question and then Rick's gonna turn into cutting a promo. But Rick doesn't hear what Hogan says, so Rick turns around and he's like Oh, you want to go there, do you? <laughs> and it's like, he just gave you a really big compliment. <laughs> and then it's like, and then like, and then Miz just comes in and Rick just goes, sorry. <laughs> and he just kind of shrinks and becomes an old man in a second. He's just like, sorry, did I do something wrong? <laughs> and he's just a grande. And it's like, no, stop. And then he remembers he's Ric Flair and he's like, whoa, whoa, I'm going to, the limousine run. <laughs> and it's like, all right, I'm back for that. Well, was- I love it. And then like, it's setting up Saudi Arabia, Team Hogan versus Team Flair. For a minute, I thought they were wrestling on Team Hogan and Team Flair. I genuinely thought they were going there as well. I thought they were going, and I think they'll probably end up doing something. 
Look, I thought it was going to be a one-on-one match. I'm like, this is where Saudi Arabia goes too far. Because <laughs> it's like, we'll give you a bajillion dollars if Hogan and Flair, if you wrestle on this. And you know yeah. they'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> they absolutely. take that money in a fucking heartbeat. But it's like, uh, Seth Rollins is the captain of Team Hogan. That doesn't make any sense, right? And like, yeah. But like, Randy Orton is the captain of Team Ric Flair. And that's deadly. And he's like, it, cutting a casual promo is like, give us a woo, Rick. And I'm like, you just have so much history. Yeah. Like, this is going to be so cool. I did like the way they threw that away, where it was like, okay, they've obviously got evolution, but they just kind of winked and nodded towards what? it. What? What? Randy Orton and Flair, yeah. Yeah, They're, I know, um, but like they won't have the other two. No, they won't. No, 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 no. But okay. the, the history I'm that excited no, there. the history <laughs> that no, sorry, the history that you're talking about is there. But they didn't ham it. They didn't go. Remember those days in Evolution where we're off riding birds? Like, do you know what I mean? It's not like that. They didn't kind of get into it, and they didn't ham it. They just kind of were like, Randy's just like, hey. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like it. I didn't cop why Randy was until they got in the ring and just looked at each other. And it's like, there we go. That's why. Yes, I get it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a bit random. Also as well, do you know what I felt weird? Do you remember the bit at the end of Raw where uh, the main event's happening and Rollins is like, it comes back from the break and Rollins is making his entrance and then like Randy Orton and Barry Corbin are just standing awkwardly on the side of the stage. <laughs> it's like they didn't get an entrance. They're just standing there and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like the owl lads in the Muppets just heckling them. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, boom! <laughs> it's like, oh, it was so awkward. What do we think of the new set, by the way? I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I really like it. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's new. It is new. It stressed me out a bit. Why? Because it's like curved. Yeah. It's yeah, you could do like a fucking kickflip on it or something. Like a free fall. It's like a slide. Yeah. It's a slide, yeah. But it's like, it just it stresses me out because it's like, I just feel like someone's going to slip sometime. That's, that sounds good. <laughs> like, the health and safety of its concern. Yeah, right? I'm just—I don't understand how it works. Like, I just don't get it. Like, it's well, weird. because clearly Shane McMahon's gonna free fall down it. Is SmackDown the same? I don't know. We don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't know. oh I hope they get a big, filthy fucking fist smashing straight to it. <laughs> Bring back the fist. <laughs> Bring back the fucking fist. Yeah. Uh, the, do you know what I like as well? The SmackDown graphics. Do you know why they have the crowd in front of them? And it's like a, it's like kind of a gift graphic. Do you see the the match graphics they have? They have the crowd, but they're jumping in front of them like it's no. kind of a gif. And then there's the wrestlers, and it looks like a concert. It makes it look like a concert, and the wrestlers are like really big versions of themselves, and they look like giants. And then you have the crowd who are tiny in front of them, but their hands are bopping in the air. No, I want to see this. It's but a really cool. I graphic. do like how is it, if it's different to Raw, I like that. It is, they're very different, and it's yeah, very and modern. And like. it's, I love how they're doing the draft, and they're kind of separating them again, making them kind of separate companies, like. Yeah. Like, I love that. We haven't even talked about NXT and AEW. Like, but well, that's because it's th- this time of the week. You know, we give, give it another day. Week. Give it like, yeah. day, you know what I mean? It's it, this is why the best on me wrestling fan. I say it all the time. Like, it's fucking get one day and we'll be talking about something completely different. Like NWA and Anderson K having her face on her title. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's like all this. Do you like, not think that looks a bit like, like a death memorial? It looks amazing. I'll, that's we'll save it for the hot take next week. <laughs> and. <laughs> That's that. Uh, <laughs> oh, as if as if nothing else is gonna kick up between now and next week. I I well nothing that'll be more important to me. You know what I mean. So <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what um will will we get into the questions or are you yeah s- sure yeah yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just like I don't want to interrupt any like got more shit to say. Oh, but well it was, that's, uh, a, that's the week that that would have been what the flagship was. Yeah yeah pretty <laughs> much that's we, like, yeah. <laughs> we covered it all in twenty minutes like. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah no my this is awesome it was like uh, Danny Burch on two or five live so. That's cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, no. I do want to talk about one more thing. New Japan. <laughs> did you just hear about this? No. The ambulance. Yeah. So they had... Did you not hear about what happened in New Japan the weekend? No, I did. Yeah, yeah. The oh, my God. It was amazing. So, yeah. If you haven't heard yet. So, they had to... They started their uh, their big American show, which was so poorly promoted. I didn't realize until about six hours before it happened that it was happening. Um, they, they announced... Now, thank God I got the new FIFA. So, that's how it managed to stay a play. Um... But yeah, no, they, they announced it, um, they, they, for, for some reason, like, when it was supposed to start, they went to, like, Toru Yano, or not Yano, sorry, yeah, it was Yano, and then one of the Japanese commentators, and they were just having a chat in the Hammerstein ballroom, but it looked like, 
a fucking they were in the lobby or something and it's like what the fuck and they're just having conversations in Japan because this is another this was in my say something stupid this week if we're doing a show like they didn't have English commentary for the American show which is on at a reasonable time for America for whatever reason they just cut out the English commentary for this which is fucking ridiculous when they're in this whole we're going to have English commentary for as many shows as possible um, but anyway yeah that wasn't the biggest farce it turns out because like yeah apparently what happened was the show got delayed by an hour and a half um, because the, 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 uh, someone rang them, someone rang the local ambulance company who was supposed to service this show because you legally, to get a license to do this in New York, you need to have an ambulance present at all times and told them the show had been cancelled. And the ambulance company never checked with the venue or New Japan. They just decided to call off, their, they just took the person's word for it, decided to call off their service. It's not New Japan's fault, like, and I'm not being an apologist there. It was an absolute joke. And the show was the drizz as well. Don't watch any of it. Well, no, do you know what you can watch? You can watch the Tanahashi and Rock and Roll Express match. That was so delightfully random. They did not, the Rock and Roll Express did nothing. Tanahashi wrestled the whole match by himself. Uh, but it was cool to see the Rock and Roll Express. Wait, was it a handicap match? No, it was a six-man tag. Who were they fighting? Uh, L.I.J. They're fighting oh, okay. L.I.J. So it was a good enough match, like, because it was Tanahashi against the L.I.J. lads. Um, but yeah, the show was a farce. It wasn't good. It, did, it fell flat. It just was something like New Japan forgot it was happening, and then they just put together a random card, and then the card got fucked with, like, by someone. But it's interesting, because it's like, Ring of Honor, they have a working relationship with, and but they decided to run this night on the same night as Ring of Honor. What is it? Death by Dishonor? Was that night? Um, that was on recently. I don't, I don't know if that was proven. It, it was the same <laughs> night. Whatever, there was a big Ring of Honor show on the same. Night was that for the then. in New York? And New Japan just randomly announced this show, which is an aggressive move with someone you're supposed to have a working partnership with. So people are speculating that Ring of Honor tried to sabotage the show. Or did WWE? Or did AEW? They have beefs. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's an interesting one to watch. I think it was just fun. Yeah. yeah, it's just some run, random fans taking sides. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I genuinely think like it's it's one of those things that people are going to be like, you know, it's always going to be like, oh, was it this person, was it that person, but... Do fans know how to shut down a wrestling show, though? Do I fans d- know the way, like, this is the thing that makes me think, like, that makes me... And, I, and I, I'm buying into the conspiracy because I want to buy into yeah, the yeah. conspiracy. You know what I mean? But do fans know that if I call the ambulance company, they'll be fucked? I don't think fans know I that. I feel like the sort of fan who would be arsed doing something like that would. Right. Like, which is, enough. like, barely anyone. But, like, still, all it takes is one. You know what I mean? Imagine it was your man who rang the guards during the Royal Rumble. That would be mad. In the a few years ago. <laughs> and he's just being, like, a universal cunt now. He's, got, he, he's taking his cuntishness to world, world stage, like. <laughs> it could be, yeah. But I just wanted to mention that as well. Fair enough. So, I suppose it's time for the questions. Oh! My phone battery level is uh, 69%. That is, that's a sex number for those of you that don't know. <laughs> so that's really funny. Ah, oh, 68 now, so that's that. Makes me that uncomfortable when you make jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like talking about sex. <laughs> sex, I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm just going to get started with the questions then. At Dave Vandana of the Low Blows Network. Oh, they, 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 they <laughs> you don't, don't have to do it. Did I do that right? Yeah. Did I do that right? That I, did de- I, th- I thought I did a decent I'll job. i just do your let, own thing now. Let me, no, I'm going to copy that, but no, do it worse. No, yeah, let no. me know if uh, <laughs> if, uh, if I nail that, Dave. <laughs> what, <laughs> what music do you guys listen to nowadays? Do you have a commute or training song that you always listen to? I listen to music a lot, but I don't listen to music that's been released in the last ten years. <laughs> like when I was when I was a teenager, right? I like I listened to a lot of like fucking emo. Like My Chemical Romance is my favorite band. I also love like Guns N' Roses. I love like all emo and like nineties rock and stuff. And uh, I remember being like seventeen, eighteen, being like, I wonder if I'll still listen to this or will I have new favorite bands? I can answer categorically. I'm thirty years old and I still listen to the same music when I was seventeen, <laughs> and I refuse to listen to new things. Um, I think the only albums I've bought in the last 10 years is James Blunt's. I, I buy that every time it comes out. <laughs> That's such a Katie fucking album to buy as I'm, well. I'm like. a big James Blunt fan. He's yeah, excellent. It, it just doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. Like Just uh, swirling in like, what What do you just think? Oh, wow, this is so safe. I get really excited when he has a new album out though. And I actually go to the shop and buy a physical copy. I don't even have a CD player anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, He's like... Really? Like, why? I don't know. There's just something about him. Like, what was the lot? Like, is it because of his Twitter? 
No, I've just always literally been a massive James Blunt fan since his first album. I've bought every single album. I've seen him every time he's come to Dublin. I'm just obsessed with him. But like all the rest of the music I listen to is like hard metal, <laughs> grunge, like all this like right. much, much harder yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then James Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. That's an amazing guilty pleasure. Do you know what actually like that's I think this must be an age thing because my answer was like not in terms of the actual music but it was very similar to yourself so I used to be a DJ so like music was my thing so I would have listened to everything I have a very like kind of eclectic taste I don't say that in a wankerous way but like <laughs> I like everything like um but, like, I always said when I was DJing that I wanted to get to stage because there was a guy I worked, an older DJ who used to get me work and give me the overflow of his gigs. And, like, he was, like, he depressed the shit out of me, if I'm being honest. He was not, he got me a lot of work, so I don't dislike the guy. I don't, I'm not bashing him here. I don't name him, Ren, but, like, he got me a lot of work, but he depressed me because he was in his 50s. And, like, I went to one of his, like, gigs before, and he was, like... It was really, like, cliched, older DJ, you know what I mean? He had this big, like, mad lighting rig, and it, but it just looked ironic because he's, like, doing it in a local pub, like. And it's, like, this, the, like, the, the, the black toot is not made for this lighting rig, sir. <laughs> it's, like, um, but then, like, he told me before that he used to just have his daughter, like, download all the latest songs because he couldn't be arsed listening to them and stuff. I'm, like, I don't want to be that guy. No. I don't want to be that guy. I want it, like, while I'm DJing, I do this because I like it. And while I'm DJing, I want to like the stuff that I'm DJing. So, uh, but I go, at one stage, then I want to get to a point where I'm, like, it's just noise. I want to get to that stage with new music. I'm done. And I was done. Uh, because I, I'm, like, I want to go back and do what you said and listen to the shit that I liked when I was a teenager. So that's what I do. But I listen to very different shit. So I listen to either like fucking loads of hip hop and like obscure kind of hip hop as well like you know what I mean Lupe Fiasco is one of my like kind of faves but not as like his older shit when he first came out the newer shit got shit um but like and then like I listen to all cheesy that is dance. the most hipster answer I've ever heard by the way <laughs> the I think this more shit. This, this more obscure DJ but not his new stuff no no <laughs> this is actually when he no but the mad thing is he was more popular then like he was more popular when like he was a hipster guy but he became really he got a cult following really quick Quick. So the the stuff that was his early stuff is actually the most popular stuff. But oh, then okay. like he got into politics and do you know when like celebs get into politics and it's like this is what's wrong with the world man and I'm like I'm out, I'm out. It's not <laughs> you're a conspiracy theorist now, I'm done. <laughs> so that's when I when I was out with him. But um what was it? Um and then little sh- like I, I love like St- Martina's fucking team songs. Like that whole playlist, that was what yeah. I used to DJ. So I'm like I'm all about that shit, like fucking scooter, cascada, fucking ultra beat, Alice DJ, all that shit. Um and then like as well, wrestling songs. So like I love this though because because you know the way Spotify creates these algorithms for you? Love it, yeah. 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 So, like, because they identify... Because I have so many wrestling songs that I listen to regularly, um, it's now created a playlist because they don't identify the, like, the songs that wrestling would use as wrestling songs. So they made this random playlist that, like, is just, like other songs of like Puddle of Mud and Stained and Limp Bizkit and all these like it's a fucking savage playlist because the songs that I haven't heard of these artists that obviously I love do you know what I mean yeah yeah and it's fucking class like so yeah that'd be me that'd be my kind of um, what I listen to mine of a bit of that you know I can like kind of oh and also sorry I love uh, this is weird this is just but I'd feel like I was leaving out an answer um, acoustic covers of like uh, like it's just a random thing um, acoustic covers of like popular songs I love those as well but I listen to them in Spanish right this is a work okay. hack I, I hate working in my proper office and work because it's, it's got no windows it's very quiet all the rest of it but I can't do my paperwork listening to music in English so I listen to music in oh. Spanish so I can have noise on but I don't focus on it that's really clever. Yeah, or I, li- or I listen to instrumental music from TV shows. So the nice. Prison Break soundtracks and stuff are just really, really nice to have on, like kind of white noise in the background. Do you ever listen to Hans Zimmer? I love Hans Zimmer. Because he, he makes everything you do seem really important. <laughs> 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 That's like, I, I do that when I'm doing assignments. I'm like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, yeah, come on, type that word. Type, t- copy and paste it into word count. Yeah, 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 like, come on. Yeah, um, but that's if, not my Spotify. If, if, I need, if I need something for that, sorry, just that. I, I, I'll let you answer, I know, but I want to give you your, your time. But like... Um, Sigur Ross are my band for that. If I want background ah. music and stuff, Sigur Ross are great. If you haven't discovered them, like 
just treat yourself. If you want chill music, sleep music, if you want anything to think to, it's there a quick fix for so many things. Not working out and stuff like that. If you need intense music, they don't do intense. But like, if you want like background music or something for assignments or something, it's really good. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, actually, you just, yeah, I want to take a break for it's on the topic of like studying music or something like that. I only like, like, I thought I've only discovered it, but like, it's, and there's probably about a million names for it. But have you ever heard like Chill Wave and stuff like that? You like lo fi? Yeah, shit sort like that. Of, yeah. Mad. That's actually good for like putting in the background. But like, my Spotify, like, um, yeah, like, because like, I've got a massive playlist of like, it's like oh, yeah, over a thousand songs or whatever. So, like, that, like, the stuff that you were talking about, Rick, like, that's, that'll be kind of like near like stuff I used to have as well. So, it still comes up and it still listens to it. Recently, though, Irish rap is my fucking thing. Love it. Fucking love it. Like, JLOL. Mango and Matt Man, Versatile, Kneecap, Kojak. I still listen to people who've been doing it for ages, like Class A's, Lethal Dialect, fucking Rob Kelly. Oh, that was so good. Um, if we're talking like, oh, Skilo. Do you know rapper Skilo? Love Skilo. Uh, <laughs> These are just words you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking, what was the, the song, as far as like specific song, um, it's not on Spotify, which is a fucking pain in the air. So, like, I have to go into Musi just to turn it on specifically. So, I rarely do listen to it, but it is one of my favourites. What, are you okay, Rick? I just got a fly. Did no one see that? I did see it, yeah, yeah. No, that was amazing. I just didn't know you caught it because I couldn't see the... Because it just disappeared. I didn't know I caught it because it just disappeared. I'm like, I just caught that fly. <laughs> I just caught that fly. <laughs> oh, nice. That was fucking sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> do any of you remember the OGs in Impact so it was like Eddie Kingston Hernandez and Homicide they had a theme song that I adored I fucking loved it so much and obviously they never came back they just they got beaten and they left so we haven't heard the theme song since but I, I somehow managed to track down the name of it and um, if you're interested it's uh, fucking what's it called Cold Blooded by Vice Versa with a H so cause just because they're hip and trendy I'd imagine <laughs> I feel where like is I the need, H? I feel what at the end it's one word, vice versa, H. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I feel like I need to show it some more names because you have na- lo- loads of names and I've just said James Blunt. <laughs> 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 and I, I, I do have better taste now. And I said my chemical romance as well yeah, and Guns yeah. N' Roses. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't, if, I don't want people to think I'm obsessed with James Blunt. I am, <laughs> you but are, it's no, not the thing I listen it. to. There's nothing you can say to reverse um, that. <laughs> but like, Oh, I don't know bands like the Rasmus, like Simple Plan, like oh. Bowling for Soup, Buller for My Valentine, Trivium, like proper just like older school, like emo, new metal, that sort of stuff. A lot yeah. of the, a lot of the pre-show, uh, Five Factory music would be your. It's playlist. my playlist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if it's you like, the, if you're there, if you go to the Five Factory shows and you like the pre-shows, it's Katie's. Also, um, I. Uh, I'm just going to plug my Instagram here because uh, one of my Instagram highlights, I put all my workout songs on it. Oh. So whatever I'm listening to while I'm training, I put it as my Instagram highlight. I like um, that. And it's cool because then sometimes people like DM me being like, oh, are you listening to that? You might like this. And then they'll give me other recommendations. Um. Um, I try to listen to them. Actually, I did listen to an Idols album recently. That was new. There yeah. you go. Please don't plug your social media on my show ever again. Um, <laughs> 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 Thanks for your question, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, lads, we're half an hour in and we've answered one question. It's, <laughs> it's a good question, though. I love talking yeah, about music. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed that. Do as people well. like hearing it? Like, is that something that the guys tweet us in? Did you enjoy that conversation or did we just disappear up our own arses for a few <laughs> minutes? <laughs> um, yeah, well, Joe, it actually does tie into the second one. Uh, another music related question. It's almost as if I planned it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm just going to pretend you didn't. I'm going to take credit for it. Uh, at Chris Jack. <laughs> Um, what's the best cover of a song you've ever heard? It can be an official cover or one played by a pub band at your aunt's 50th or something like that. So, um, I don't know how many people have been to Gran Canaria on holidays. Right, this is very specific. There's a pub <laughs> called The Shamrock, right? And there's a guy who plays there called Kelly Marlowe. And he plays like three or four nights a week. He is the best vocalist I have ever seen live in my life. And like I've been to hundreds of gigs and uh, he's really cool. He just does these massive rock songs. And he's the best singer you'll ever see. And he's right there in front of your face. And after his show, he makes a point to ha- have a pint with everyone in the crowd. So I was chatting to him. And I was like, oh, I just really, really loved your show. I love the music. And he's like, who's your favorite band? And I was like, Guns N' Roses. And he's like, I used to tour with them. You know, like Wayne's World, right? When they had the, the roadie. And he was like, you know, uh, you know, or Ozzy wouldn't go on stage unless I got a glass of brown M&Ms. And he just had a story for like everyone. Yeah. This is what this guy. I was like nice. and then he just started telling me like Guns N' Roses tour stories and then like it would nice. lead on to another band and another band but he's by far like the best live vocalist I've ever seen and like he did this cover of Purple Rain 
which I love anyway, and not many people can do Purple Rain justice. Oh, I was just, I, I, I turned into like a groupie for like two hours. Like it was amazing. <laughs> nice. It's fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Um, my favorite actual, there's two. Um, oh my God, I'm after forgetting he's a really famous person as well. Um, so there's two, there's two that my favorite like official covers are. One is Chester Bennington, Rolling in the Deep. I haven't heard that. Oh, it's amazing. It's a live song as well. Now, I think it's on Spotify. It's so good because it's just so unexpected. Like, I'm going out of your way to, to listen to it. It's absolutely fantastic. And then I'm looking for another one. And I'm just, I know this person, but, like, I can't think of him for whatever reason. But I'm just blanking. And he's really, like, um, it's John Mayer, uh, Free Fallen. Oh, yeah, oh, I've it's heard that one. so fucking good. Like, I can listen to it nonstop. Um, in terms of, like, things, covers that I've heard, um, my auntie and uncle's wedding, and my auntie was a DJ for years, um, but they're, like, so the, you knew the playlist was going to be good, but they had, like, they had a, good, uh, a savage band there as well, like, because, again, like, just the taste was, the music was always going to be class, like, but, like, the the, the playlist was so specified. That's why I think, like, again, DJing, like, it's... It's kind of gone to shit because, like, people don't appreciate that, like, DJ, the talent of it is making you feel like this song is for you. You know what I mean? You've plucked a song that's like, well, you like this, well, I'm going to bring back this song. If you like that song, I'm going to bring back this song that you completely forgot about and just take you to a place in your life. And that's what she was really good at because she just picked the most obscure songs. Um, and, and this was actually my uncle, but, like, the, the band were doing an acoustic set as, like, we were coming into the place where they're getting married, where the actual wedding ha- ceremony is happening. And they did a uh, so like they did two. They did the XX. I can't remember the name of the song, but then they did um, a cover. Do you know the Up Team song? And yeah. it was just really subtle. I can't do it justice, but it was just really subtle. And I started like grabbing people, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Because we'd watched Up for Christmas with my uncle a couple of years beforehand, and all like just cried together. And it was a real like emotional Christmas Day, a really nice, memorable Christmas Day moment. And I'm like, "Oh my god, that's because of that." And I'm like, "This is so." And they they did it so well and so subtly that no one else realized. But I'm like, "Lads, lads, lads, look, look, look at the fucking song." And I just like. Like that feeling, I'll never forget it. Like I love, I love feelings when you get a good cover song like that, where it's just like unexpected, just grabs you. Like, um. So yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I think Johnny Cash's version of "Hurt" is way better than Nine Inch Nails. Oh version. Yeah, so good, yeah, good oh, yeah. I think even Nine Inch Nail. I think Trent Reznor has said that. Yeah. Like. Uh, does Nicola disagree with me on that? Somebody disagrees with me on that, and I, like it nearly came to blows. They're no. like the Nine no. Inch Nails version's better. I was like. How? <laughs> it's like, I think the I think the Jeff Buckley version of Hallelujah is better than the Leonard Cohen. Yeah, one. easily. Yeah, but like you'll always get one or two sticklers being like, "But Leonard Cohen," and you're like, "Yeah, but yeah. Alexander Burke is better than both of them." So uh. I, I, I don't even know who they are. If I'm being honest with you. I'm just <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jeff Buckley died, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Twenty Seven Club. Yeah. Actually, I think my favorite covers by bands, um, Nirvana's Unplugged album when they did the Man Who Saw the World, David oh, Bowie. Oh yeah, and Led. Belly's Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Is it not a wrestling cover? Like, is it not? There's definitely like a band that covered something. It's just, it's like it's in my head somewhere. And the second we finish the podcast, I'm going to be like, oh! A wrestling cover? <laughs> no, it was like like a wrestler's theme song that had like a band cover something else. Was it? Like, do you know what song I love actually? Do you remember? Now, this isn't technically a cover, but it's an acoustic version. Do you remember they did the acoustic version of Randy Orton's theme song? No. Oh, Voices. It, like, the, it's the band who performed Voices. Oh, but okay. they did it for, I think it was WrestleMania 30. It was when it was in a big match. That's and cool. they did a video package of them like, getting ready. It's kind of like a, a Desire video package. And it's like black and white, but it's the acoustic mix of his team. And then WWE released on Spotify, so you can listen to it today. It's really good because it gives you a whole new appreciation. That's what I love about a good cover and a good acoustic cover. Um, that it gives you a new appreciation for the song. Because it's like, yeah, that was cool noise that I kind of just let happen in the background it's a grand song but I never thought about it that much but then when you hear a good acoustic cover you're like oh I'm actually thinking about yeah. everything to do with this character and I'm buying into it like it's so good voices the acoustic mix is fantastic wrestling covers the song I used for Trinity Brawl 1 um, <laughs> is from Ready to Rumble the WCW film <laughs> and it's a band called Biff Naked covering Twisted Sisters We're Not Gonna Take It Yeah, and I love 
It's a great song. I love song. the cover version. Yeah. Like, and I love the fact that girl sings and I was like, I need to use this at least once in my life because it's so good. That must have felt so, because I remember that entrance and like everyone just started singing along. Yeah. Like that must have felt so good that you've plucked an obscure song and that like everyone just bought it straight yeah. away. Like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was really cool. Fun. You didn't rest on Trinity Brawl 1. I mean... <laughs> I mean Dolly Bell wrestling. <laughs> I'd say it was busting for her, like but yeah. Yeah, she told me it was really, really fun. Oh, you man. really liked Dolly Bell, didn't you? Like uh, no, I thought she was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Chris. Uh at Kento CCFC pro- uh, actually this is a pretty interesting one. Pronounce the following names. So I'm gonna spell them out and just see one by one how you pronounce them. Um C A H I L L. Cal. Cal. Yeah, Cahill for me is like the the right way to pronounce it. But if I know, like for example, Tim Cahill or like Gary Cahill, and it's kind of bet into me, I'm like, am I called that? But I do believe that Cahill is the right way to do it. Yeah. Same way, like if you look at Vince McMahon, it's McMahon. But we don't we don't say that because it's like we're so used to calling him Vince McMahon that like. See, I say Cal because I have family who have this surname and. Like, in Wicklow, you say Cal. And it's an Irish name, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just English people who can't say the name, so they say Cahill. Yeah, that's probably it. I think that's like, where it like came Keo. from. Like, What's the story of that? Just say Kyo. Yeah, Kyo. It's not even I heard, like. But they can't, they can't say some words. Like, okay, so my suit name is Jer. But you go over to England, and it's like, Guh. Yeah. Guh. <laughs> well, and it's like, say but it, you like... can say J. Say John. John. Say Jer. Good. <laughs> it's just like, what's wrong with you? Say Gerard. Gerard. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why can't you just shorten that? And it, it just breaks it, it, It's brain. just linguistics, like the way our mouth and tongue is made to pronounce like our language and our letters and our things. Like I've tried to learn bits of Portuguese for work. I just cannot say some words because I can't roll my tongue. Yeah. I can't make those sounds. Okay, but why can't the Brit say Doherty? Why does it have to be Doherty? Where does that even come from? Where does the K come from? Yeah, that's very <laughs> true, actually. That's a very good point. Like, I don't get it. I, although, then again, when I was doing Japanese, R and L are the same letter, and I couldn't get that at all. <laughs> so Yeah, and you I feel racist I mean. when you try yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, you feel like you're slagging them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why, when they speak in like our language, it's like... Uh, or they get their R's and L's mixed up yeah. it's the same letter but then but like that's that's different that's Japanese and English this, this is English and English so I don't get their excuse yeah, no, I, don't. I think they're just being lazy yeah. fuck them um, but there's uh, six more names I'm just going to spell them out <laughs> I don't get this right K-I-N-S-E-L-L-A Kinsella yeah what other ways to pronounce it I think English people pronounce it Kinsella no, it's Kinsella. There's no. I, I, I've heard it pronounced Kinsella, but that's wrong. I'll take your word for it. And I'm, I think I know when I hear it, I'm like, "You're pronouncing that wrong." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never heard anybody say it other than Kinsella. If I'm being yeah. honest, so but okay. Uh, oh, I've heard this one. All right, C O S T E L L O. Costello. Co- Costello. Yeah, you see, I used to think it was Costello, and then I was listening to uh, Jade on this podcast, yeah. and you were talking about it, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, it is Costello." Okay. I used to always call her Costello um, because, like, I like I've got a big thing like when I'm saying it in an official way. Um, I, like I agree, it's Costello, but like, and she says Costello, and she told me to say Costello, but I'm like, yeah, but I feel like when I'm announcing it, Jade Costello, it's like, no, Jade Costello sounds like it's like it's yeah, bigger. Actually, that's the American version because it's Elvis Costello. Yeah, yeah. So I like, like, but yeah. like, if I was talking to her in like normal, I'd be like, Who, like, who's your graphic designer? She's really good. Ah, oh, Jay Costello. But you put my mic in front of me, I'm like Jay Costello. I'm like, yeah, it just no, sounds more you. important. Well, like, I you know actually, what I mean? you. it's, yeah, it's yeah. an interesting one. So yeah. obviously, let us know. Just um, making a bigger deal. I'm putting her over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was really loud. <laughs> um, okay, I guess another one again. I don't know how this could be pronounced any other way. C O U G H L A N. Coughlin. Coughlin. Yeah. Yeah, Coughlin. What's Coglin. Yeah, I don't actually know where you go. I don't <laughs> yeah, what's the other one? Like, Kendall's I mean, from Cork, he's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not like, what, what are the other Coughlin. for these? Coughlin. Yeah, apparently, like, you know, you know what, what's that place in Cork? Y'all, is it? Yeah. Apparently, like, who was it? Someone said, Yoggle. Somebody said to me that they were on the bus and they're from Cork themselves, that, like, they're on the bus to Y'all, and someone on the bus goes, hey, I'm trying to find, and they're like, they're Irish as well. They're like, hey, I'm trying to find Yoggle. They just say Y'all. Um,. Okay, I have seen. Two. <laughs> I was so sorry. I was I was on the phone. <laughs> One of my weird things is when I'm talking to clients in my job, I'm on the phone and I make deliberately bad jokes that no, they won't laugh for because I just get a kick out of it. <laughs> so someone turns around, they're from Cork, and they go, uh, they, and they go, where where where's that base? And they go, y'all, and I'm like, as in what's up? And then they're like, what? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm so glad I've never had to call you for any reason. Uh, 
I'm like, <laughs> another one of my cheesy jokes is such a, this is such a tangent. Another one of my cheesy jokes is, uh, if they get like, say, like, what is it? Uh, if like, say, y- you ring in and it's like Kino Carroll, and I'm like, can I get your email there? And they're like, Kino Carroll at gmail.com, and I'd be like, congratulations. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? It's like, you got the name. <laughs> and it's just like, cause, Oh, it's genuinely impressive. Like, there's, yeah. you didn't have to do Kino Carl one yeah. or Kino Carl sixty nine or something like that. <laughs> that'd be my first. That'd be <laughs> <laughs> See, if you were on the phones, you'd be like, "That's a sex number." <laughs> <laughs> that'd be my. Uh, that actually would be my first choice. I'll take that over the yeah, original. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. O apostrophe S H A U G N E S S Y. Oh, this H is an somewhere. interesting one. I think this is spelt wrong, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's a H in there after the G. Yeah, yeah there is. Okay, cool. So, how would you use, um, pronounce that? I've seen it two ways, O'Shaughnessy and O'Shaughnessy. I always thought it was Shocknessy. Yeah, Shocknessy. I'd, I'd lean towards O'Shaughnessy, but I thought people were going to argue with me over that. No. I think it's supposed to be O'Shaughnessy. I, no, I think the American one is O'Shaughnessy. I could be wrong, though. Right. Well, uh, yeah, that, that I is think it's Seamus when I think of that SOS. But yeah, and I used to yeah. always think they're pronouncing his name wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe... It's a, that, that's one of the more... When it's him, ones. I'd say Seamus O'Shaughnessy. No, I say Shocknessy for him. But I say yeah, Shocknessy for everyone else. I say Shocknessy for Seamus as well. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. Um, uh, will I go to the next one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got, yeah, I'm good. Okay, O apostrophe M A H O N Y. O'Mahony. O'Mahony. Oh, yeah, O'Mahony as well. But, you know what, Don will be on the bus. I was, I was reading through that. Balls Mahoney. Did, if you take away the O, it becomes a debate. Oh, okay, okay. I think, yeah, but I'd, well, still, I'd still say Mahoney. Balls Mahoney. <laughs> Does, yeah, that's a Costello thing. <laughs> <laughs> Does Mahoney not have an extra E in it? No? You're oh, right, good fuck! Joke. Yeah, good no, you're right, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there yeah. you go. What was that again? Nothing. <laughs> 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 right, here's, here's, a, here's one that I, I genuinely do not, for the life of me, know what the alternative pronunciation is. O apostrophe D-E-A. O-day. Oh, there we go. That's the alternative. Oh, yeah, it's OD, you fucking OD, what? yeah. Oh, what's OD, wrong with what, where did you see yeah. that from? Like? Yeah, though, you got your blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, th- and of course, it was going to be Kate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and we made it so far. <laughs> OD, what O'Day. the fuck? Isn't that OD? No. no, it's OD. So you say Darren OD. Darren OD? <laughs> <laughs> Darren O'D. Darren O'D. He's a footballer. Yeah. How would I know that? Well, because he played for Ireland. Like, did he? Yeah, he did. I, Phil could have played for Ireland. How do you say D A Y? D. Yeah, wait. So okay. So why do you say the same word D E A? Because I'm thinking in Irish. Does that not make an A sound? E A make an A sound. So do you say Monday and like Tuesday and all that? <laughs> <laughs> no, because but that's the that's the Irish for A is E A. No. Yeah, it's just a father. Do you see a father? Yeah, I don't see a father. Father hardens the, the, the... Maybe he couldn't put a father on Twitter. That, no, because you need to put God, all you just GR and then boom. What? You just hold. You hold all GR and you put in the father. Oh, are you joking you me? You can do that, <laughs> yeah, or on a keyboard. Or do you know you can make fathers in, like, with, like, your, your phone? No, nope, didn't know. Just holds the, holds the letter, the but letter. Damn. I've always wondered. <laughs> I've always wondered how people got fathers <laughs> into the text. <laughs> okay, he's like, oh, I, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Kenneth. That was actually that was interesting. <laughs> but Katie obviously had to ruin it. Um, at Butch underscore OTT. Hi, Butch. Um, favorite pro wrestling game. So, I mean, I, you see, there's two obvious ones there. No mercy, and here comes the pain. I want to give something different because I don't just want to state the obvious. But like, do you have a different answer? Or no, it's here comes the pain. Attitude. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the, it's and no, it's purely memories. I'm sure if I played it today, yeah, it's yeah, just, <laughs> it's purely memories. I knew I learned all the move lists, uh, move lists. I love the fact that was the first one that did proper entrances and could have people properly speak and stuff like that. Uh, it was the first one that really went in depth as well, like and had like a big roster. And I didn't just feel like they thrown together a wrestling game because it's like a big market. Like even as a kid, I didn't understand it, but like I got the wrestling games were a bit shit because like they just there was people who'd buy wrestling games but like when Attitude came along that was a game changer for me because it was like oh they've tried here they've got, oh this is the game I wanted for so long so that's it it's purely nostalgia like I said there's a lot better games since but that that gets me can I throw a wild card in here yeah, sure. I can't remember what it's called but the only game I actually committed to playing for a long time was that WWE one with the cards that was, was really that popular yeah was it, that was really popular. it was a phone game <sighs> Phone gamer, of course. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to play other games. 
Like I, uh, we've been over this. I'm very bad at them. Like I, I'm surprised you didn't say that like, your favorite video game was like WWE Monopoly or some shit. Like you know, <laughs> fucking. I for me, yeah, right. So my answer, like honorable mentions to shut your mouth and like you know the earlier SmackDown versus Raws. Again, I'm kind of stating the obvious. Um, I loved Ultimate X in TNA. The, oh, yeah, that was a shit game, but great, great that. roster, great X. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna throw in something a bit different. It is technically a game, technically wrestling, probably not what you're thinking, but Extreme Warfare Revenge. Oh lo- yeah, that's a very good. Show. I lost. That's, that actually probably is my number one, arguably. If yeah. like, you know, what I mean, like I lost. If we're talking like errors lost in that game, I wasted a lot of time on that game. <laughs> oh man, if that was on Mac, I would not have. I would not get anything done. <laughs> or not. Get Oh, up. it's so... Oh, man. I might actually do NWA on that. I don't want to get home. Now I think there about it. Like, it's, like, at any time during the day, if I think of EWR, I'm like... For oh, people who don't do know, basically... Oh, it's it's shocking me to people that don't know that. I yeah, would love it. Because people are like, they're know. like, oh, bring back GM mode, GM mode. You know what I mean? This is way better than GM mode. So basically, for those of you that don't know, it is um, a game where... It's a booking simulator. It's free. It's, it's free and it's old as fuck as well. So it's like, you can go on, you download it. It's very simple to use. Um... Well, it's a, bit, it's a bit in-depth at first, but you can get the hang of it. It's not like TEW is what comes after that, and that's like where you're competing with East with like EastEnders and Carnation Street and the Monday Night Wars. It's way too in-depth. But Extreme Warfare Revenge is like GM mode, except you, you, you do everything, really. Like, you, you control... You get to fight with other promotions. You can take over promotion, make your own. I, I, I don't know. Just, just look it up, right? It's, it's Championship just, Manager for Wrestling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's it's championship it. manager for wrestling and like even the new one, they're making a new one now and they've got like it's so in depth where they're like they've got like bookings double like bookings clash and stuff like that. Like uh and there's like social media outbursts and so on and like you can react to that. Like it's very in depth. I don't know how it'd play. Like like you were saying, the new ones can get too in depth where it's just like there's so much going on that you can't get on top of it, which I get. And that could ruin it, but I do like the depth that goes into it. I like the nerdiness and the, like, just how how it's, like, so committed to, to like, pleasing a tiny market. Because the more in depth you get, the more you're alienating people. But they go all in for that. I respect that. TEW, which is the newer one, actually, as in depth as it is, has a lot of Irish wrestlers on it. <laughs> a lot of if you download the mods, it's got Katie on it. You can beat up Katie in uh, in this. It's it's pretty fun. <laughs> Just job her out. <laughs> yeah, job her out to whoever you want. If your favorite wrestler is Alison K, you can literally have Alison K. Is this Katie. where you? Uh, is this where you sent me the screenshot of Phil's stats? Yeah, and show, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I showed him when he got real annoyed at yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and one of the stats is, like, sex appeal as well. So it's like, because I remember, like, Justy tweeting about it before, and it's like, so you can just, like, roast your favourite Irish wrestlers on there. It's pretty good. But EWR, I recommend it. That's a simple one. There's very few Irish... There's, like, there's a few Irish wrestlers in Extreme Warfare Revenge, but their stats are fucked, because the person who does the stats for EWR doesn't watch Irish wrestling. Yeah. So he just sees, like, Martina, Jordan Devlin, and he gives them, like, the worst stats. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I recommend it. Download the mods. It's on EWBattleground.com. So, um... Have I got that right? Yeah, I have. So, Boom. recommend it. Good show. Th- oh, yeah, thanks for the question, Butch. Um, oh, this is a great one. Right, this is fucking gas. At Owen underscore Davis 1, which XFL team are you going to support? So, basically, right, for those of you that don't follow uh, American sport, in, in football in this part of the world, right, we have Manchester City. Manchester United, <laughs> Shamrock Rovers. They have the Cleveland Killer Gladiator Assassins. I'm like, all right, <laughs> relax. It's just football, <laughs> but it's very dramatic and it's very exciting. I have all the teams on my phone yes. because I was like, this, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I'm gonna, I have to read these out. They're fucking gas. So I'm gonna ask you about now. And unfortunately, obviously, it's an audio medium, so I don't, ha- I can't like show you the logos. You can look them up. Um, <laughs> so there's only eight of them. Do you support the Dallas Renegades <laughs> or the uh, oh oh the, the font is very bad here uh, Houston that says Houston Roughnecks <laughs> <laughs> the LA Wildcats <laughs> already my favorite yeah. <laughs> high school musical yep yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, Wildcats <laughs> everywhere Throw that's all everyone thinks when they see it I don't know why they named them that like or maybe that's why they I hope they have like giant pictures like they have of Troy Bolton in the, in the high school <laughs> together forever <laughs> oh I can't this is really tough to see Ooh, I think it says New York New York Guardians they have um, oh I kind of like that they have a, really they guard New York that, that's mm, I think that's kind of it's the shittest name but they've got a cool logo it's of like a big tiger wolfy looking thing I'm kind of into that I'm digging it and the thing that you have to take into account is what city are you lo- most likely to visit as well you know what I mean yeah, so if you're there cool, right? which 
which XFL stadium could you possibly end up maybe possibly someday <laughs> dipping into you know what I mean yeah I didn't think that through when I picked the Philadelphia N- Eagles neither did I and like so now I'm like the Philadelphia Eagles like Philadelphia they have uh, they have a court in their stadium because there's so many t- trials and fights at their fans that they need to build a court <laughs> to be able to process all the arrests that happen at games they're scummy always always uh, sunny in Philadelphia based <laughs> on a true story like, yeah I support Baltimore Ravens because the fucking wrestler is called oh, Raven God. I'm never going to go to Baltimore but like it's the thing it's like well, all sports it's like, you need like, to watch the wire I just, <laughs> I just chose like I just choose it straight away and like oh well actually do I regret that choice and you can't go back so yeah. I'm going to take my time before I choose my XFL team um, this does not have a city on it just uh, OC I don't know Defenders D- DC Defenders oh sorry it's a D- yeah <laughs> DC Defenders not yeah, actually yeah, that makes sense yeah. um, they're the ro- they're the fucking John Cena of the whole they're the che- they don't, that's a, that's yeah. a shite name like <laughs> And the logo wasn't very good either for, yeah. you know, dramatic... It you know, looks like a things. Harry Potter cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Tampa Bay Vipers. So if you're a Randy Orton fan or you might want to hang out in NXT, that's the closest one to NXT, I imagine. It's good, too. Um, Vipers, maybe. Oh, I like this one. The Seattle Dragons. And they've got a dragon as their, like, picture. That makes sense. I like it. I like it's the branding. Logical. It stands out because I'm like, that's okay. So they're all about the dragons. The dragons from like, Seattle. What together. exactly is a renegade? What exactly is a wildcat? You know, what exactly is a guardian? It's a bit vague. Yeah. They're like, no, we're no, a dragon. I'm from Seattle and I'll burn uh, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. And oh, <laughs> this is the best one. St. Louis Battlehawks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I'm with me. St. Louis. I, I want to be a Battlehawk. St. Louis, you won me over. Whatever, is, whatever a Battlehawk is, I'm, I want to be. Yeah, Missouri, <laughs> Missouri you, you've won me over. Right, St. Louis, Missouri, the Battlehawks, we're here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I might support the Baltimore Ravens in one league, but I'll go across the country to support the other one. <laughs> um, no, that's that actually a fucking gas question. Thanks, Lord. The Lord. logo's deadly as well. Yeah. It's, um, it's a uh, pair of wings with a sword in it. Yeah. Do, do people have Hawks battle? Is that a thing? Well, they do, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be called the Battlehawks. <laughs> Seems cruel. That's why... Oh, and... Oh, wait, hang on a minute. No, no, St. Louis. Seattle Seahawks. That's not near them, no? Mm, no. Okay, no, because that's also really cool. I love, like... Just, I think Hawk is such a gas American, like, thing to, like, throw in. That's so over the top, you know what I mean? Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Battlehawk. Oh, man, I'm going to call myself that. No, I'm the Battlehawk. <laughs> <laughs> man, like, do the players do the players take that to heart and they come out and they're like, do they, do they have like their own hacker where it's like, <laughs> 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 it's basically birds of war. And it's always funny. Oh, amazing! Oh amazing. man, I love American sport. It's just so funny. Like when I'm watching like basketball or like. NFL or anything like that. That to me, it's like when a non wrestling fan watches wrestling. They could be watching the best match ever, but all they see is just like, ooh, I'm a wrestler, ooh, you know, pretend they hate Whereas we'd be like, that's really cool. They yeah. can't see past the theatrics. And that's how I feel about American sport a lot of yeah. time. I do plan on getting into it though. NASCAR as well looks fucking deadly. Yeah, they like go in a circle. Driving in a circle <laughs> for, for days at times. But I'm legit, like, I want to watch that. So, um, <laughs> my, but just for future reference, while we're talking about American sports, my favorite uh, NASCAR driver is Creed. Don't know what his first name is. I just saw a bit of it there, like, a few weeks ago and Creed are also a band that made Just my sacrifice yeah so right, he's fair. my favourite and no, also Raven reason. Creed is a pretty cool wrestler there you go. and Consequences Creed anyway I'm getting sidetracked nothing bad has <laughs> ever happened with the word Creed like okay <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think. Apollo pretty cool what Apollo pretty cool Apollo Creed uh, Rocky Watch more movies, dude. Ah, you see, now, now I'm relieved. So I was like, is that like a natural disaster? Was I meant to know that? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that a natural disaster? I should know. Like, Apollo Creed does sound like uh, Yeah, yeah, no. So it's a movie. Yeah, cool. I didn't see it. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, can I just say thanks for everyone who didn't ask a movie-related question so far? I really appreciate that. We got them out of the way last <laughs> yeah. year. Rick strategically put them all in on week one. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Tony Kenny, right. Uh, this was um, thrown in today, actually. Yep. Uh, a queen versus keen because we can't go one week without Katie Harvey embarrassing herself in front of everyone. Um, I actually really like the the question this week. I might be okay at this one. <sighs> oh, Katie okay. might be the favour for once. <sighs> List as many wrestling promotions as you can in thirty seconds. Also, Keen, please win. That'll be a great birthday present for me. Tony, happy birthday. I, I didn't say it on Twitter because I meant to say it on the podcast. Delighted I didn't forget. Happy birthday. Uh, hope it's a good one. You're twenty, which is um. All right, I suppose. <laughs> apparently, apparently, I don't get why 21 is a significant one. It should be 20. That's a nice even number. I think and it f- comes from America, doesn't it? Because you, you can, can drink. drink. That's bollocks. Like, four and five divide evenly in 20 as well. Good number, you know what I mean? Stay, <laughs> like, 20, I don't know. Why not seven and three, man? What? What's your beef with seven and three? What do you mean seven and three? Seven and three divide into tw- 21. As w- 
Oh, oh, 21. Oh, no, you see, 21's an odd number. That's the problem. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so they might divide evenly, but it's still an odd number at the end of the day, so fuck it. You know what I mean? Whereas 20, nice and even. Katie's definitely my pick for this because I, I think you're after getting sidetracked. I have. My concentration is rocked. Tony, your birthday, <laughs> which I'd love to not disappoint you on, may, has, may have just rocked me here. Um, but... Oh, I mean... How do you want to do this? Well, Katie's going first, obviously, because okay. I'm the host. Uh, right so you can do an immediate... Or okay, so, Katie's 30 seconds on the clock. Is this active promotions or any promotion? I was meant to ask that. I was, any yeah, promotion. Any, yeah, we'll fair. go any. Okay. Right, so 30 seconds on the clock starting now. Fire Factory, OTT, Phoenix, Titanic, PWU, CCW, Progress, ICW, Tidal, Riptide, uh, Dragon Pro, Battle Pro, IPW, uh, Attack, uh, Showdown... FWF, uh, WXW, GWF, ICW in Italy, uh, <laughs> White Wolf, um, fucking Source, Target, Breed, NWA, uh, the other Breed Wrestling. Um, 25. What other Breed Wrestling? Delete that. Uh, 25. No, no, no. There's Breed, NWA, and then there's Breed Wrestling. There's two. 25. One's in Birmingham, and oh I know 25. Oh you need to God. get more oh than one God. per second. I didn't take a breath there. 25. Breed versus Keen is cancelled. Holy <laughs> shit. Keen, 30 seconds on the clock. More than one a second. Try it starting now. WWE, New Japan, uh, Ring of Honor, Impact, MLW, AEW, NWA, ICW, Progress, OTT, Fight Factory, Phoenix, CCW, Pro Wrestling, Ulster, Uprising, Titanic, um, uh, uh, Progress, Riptide, Fight Club Pro, uh, ICW, uh, Fierce Females, Pro Wrestling seconds. Eve, WXW, uh, the, the, the one that GWF, uh, uh, Evolve, Shine, FIP, uh, uh, Source, Target, um, uh, One more to get. Uh, three. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's he just said all of mine and he oh, said progress twice why, oh did he oh, yeah what? he said progress twice Snitch. no he didn't she's lying she's lying he she's said salty. progress twice Snitch means that she did so salty. okay it's a draw it's a draw what do we do well nothing That's first person right. to say rest in motion wins NWA. Oh! <laughs> you can't say what you already said you can't say not alright 0-1 what 0-1 but she won again. Katie didn't win. Right? Oh, we're, yes. not, we're not going to ruin yes. Tony. No, okay, look. The other way this is my life, Tony. Okay? This no, is my no, livelihood. The other way they've got away goal rule in Champions League, even though it means nothing. I think we should have Tony Kenny's birthday rule, where Kean can't, if it's a draw, Kean wins. I think you need to just stop being a sore fucking loser. I'm not a sore loser, because we didn't, I didn't lose. Tony, Tony, back me up on this. I didn't I lose. You know I didn't ruined. lose. <laughs> no, I don't. Happy birthday, Tony. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for that. I <laughs> won! Shocker. You didn't <laughs> win. It was I a did draw. Win. It was and a draw. What? It was an impressive run because a lot of them you wouldn't have said unless I'd said them first. No, I love Source and Target. They're my favourite. They were the two I was thinking of. He definitely, definitely doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of Source. I just... Yeah, I don't know what target is. I'm just, <laughs> they're, both, oh, they're both Scottish promotions. Yeah, fuck's sake. Um, yeah, I was like, yeah, because Kate can just use I kept mine all very local. I worked my way from Ireland through the UK. See, that was my strategy. And then when you I started using it, I was like, fuck, you fucking dick. I fuck forgot it. WWE. <laughs> yeah, I know it's that as well, yeah. That's uh, mad, actually. <laughs> well, bye, Gary. That's it. one in the books. <laughs> yeah. So it's like 15 1. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm still salty. Um, at Joe, St- oh, uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, at Joe Stodge, um, what's the best nickname you've ever heard? <laughs> you snow a lad called Blue Streak because he was meant to have pissed in a swimming pool that had color changing dye in it. <laughs> best nickname? Um, we used to go to school with a guy. I love nicknames that, like, you know, once like so, like someone is eating an ice cream and first, and then for the rest of their life they're on this iceberg. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's something innocuous happens, and then you're just stuck with that. Because that one thing that happened one time that didn't even matter that much. There was one guy that called in, and it's just because my dad was colorblind. Um, and I don't even know if he is. He's just stupid. Like, one day he called in for me, and then he came, and then, like, he goes, there's some lad with red hair that called in for you. And I'm like, I don't have any friends with red hair, strategically, like. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm joking. I, I joke. He's not joking. He's dead serious. He's dead, am, he says no, a lot of things. But I hate yeah. you. I'm behind the scenes, seriously. Um, but no, um, I was like, I don't have friends with red hair. So I, 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 like, I get onto the lads when we're out. I'm like, who called into me yesterday? And I mean, one of the lads got, said, like, oh, yeah, I did. And then, like, because of that, he every ginger joke under the sun, he did not have red hair. He had, like, jet, like br- dark brown hair. Like, his hair 
was as ginger as mine. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, he did not have red hair at all, but he did to us from then on, and he had to accept the slagging of a ginger for the rest of his time in school because of that. <laughs> it was amazing. It was funny because, like, he used to get personal. He'd be like, I don't have red hair. It's like, yeah, that's a joke. Like, <laughs> it's like, but we wouldn't acknowledge it. Do you know what I mean? It'd be like, you do, like, clearly. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss being a teen and just gaslighting people. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I don't know. Like there used to be a lad from around Bray. He used to be called Compo because he used to find potholes to cycle his bike into to get compensation. Ah, that makes. So sense. he was known as Compo. Like I don't know. It's just like I can't think of many off the top of my head. Like uh, most r- nicknames I know come from people's wrestler names. Like uh, yeah. So. yeah, it's it's not someone I know personally. I I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but um. Like, I know, <laughs> like, I was told about this, like, some lad started college and um, was telling me that they all had this, like, you know, you know, like, introduce yourself in the circle type thing, and they're like, oh, my name's this, my name's this, and one lad just goes, I'm Strangles. <laughs> <laughs> and gave no context behind the name either. Oh, I just, I imagine it being, like, Killer Cross, but, like, small and, like, <laughs> like college student looking thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, and I don't actually want to know the story behind it, to be honest. I'm, no. I'm happy just it's better. not not know about yeah. it. Um, <laughs> To imagine. But thanks for the question, Joe. Um, Aina at Brown with No says, favorite Simpsons episode. Oh, this is a really hard one. Monorail, monorail, monorail. That's a good one. Yeah. I think mine is when they go to Shelbyville to steal back the lemon tree. Oh, that is a good one. I just always liked that, and I don't, I can't put my finger on it, but I just always really liked it. Oh, and I love the one, this a typical Katie answer, the one where Lisa makes the the Barbie doll, oh. Lisa Lionheart. I just love it. Like, I love it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I, it is a Katie <laughs> answer, but I loved Katie it. <sighs> um, I, I don't really have favorite episodes of any kind of show. Like, it's pretty rare that something will stand out at me, and I'll be like, "That's my favorite episode," you know. Um, Simpsons in particular, I just I could not, I can't differentiate. Yeah, because like, yeah. I, I I haven't watched Simpsons in years. Like, yeah, I, I you rewatch. It was something I watched when I was a kid, and it was kind of just I'd watch it when it was on. I didn't really like, you know, focus on it yeah. or you know. So Netflix need to get on that fast. Yeah, <laughs> like I need to rewatch it and just just first ten seasons. Yeah, you can leave the rest. It's fine. Don't <laughs> Mo- worry about like it. I remember moments more so. Yeah, same, same moments and quotes. I do like the one where Homer becomes a bin man, though. And like blows all the budget on like uniforms and a parade. <laughs> yeah, the song as well. Yeah. Or yeah. also, the, what's the one with the, just think of the Simpsons song. See my vest, see my vest. That's yeah. one of my faves. Their songs are so great. Uh, I don't know why I'm in a Simpsons song, but what else is there? Uh, the Stonehenger's one. That's a good one. Um, I'm only thinking of Simpsons music now. Sorry, I'm on a train of thought. I generally it. like the Treehouse of Horror ones as well. Oh, yeah. Like, I, that's a real tradition as well, yeah. the Treehouse of Horror. I Horrors. loved when Bart and Lisa used to team up. Do- those episodes were very good, and they'd be detectives. Yeah. That was a good one. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, thanks, Aina. <laughs> um, at Alan Tarr underscore, I've been watching... Uh, I've been watching loads of cooking <laughs> tutorials. Weird time to get cut off because it was like I thought you were going to go. I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been watching loads of cooking tutorials and thinking of things to start meal prepping for weight loss. Um, things to start. Yeah, did, I, did that make sense? Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> My question is, what's your favorite meal? Like that I cook or in general? I, I didn't specify, so I mean both. <laughs> well, I can't cook, so it's nothing oh. I cook. Well, so there's no real meal. point in, in um, asking well, I can cook. I can cook two things. I can cook burgers and I can cook pasta. That's it. Like That's the oh, extent nice. of my cooking. Um, like, do you make the burgers or do you just heat them? Like? I can make them from scratch. Okay, fair enough. Fair with, enough. like, the mince I'll and the onions that. Yeah, and that's stuff. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I don't do it often, but I can. Okay. Um... I don't know, my favourite meal, pizza. Like, I just, I'm a big pizza fiend. Mm. My favourite one is pizza with spinach, ham, and a fried egg cracked on top. Oh. It's my favourite. If you, like, if you had to give them, because you may be looking for healthy options, given the... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no. If fuck you're that looking one. for, like, is there any, any nice kind of meals that you'd have when you're, like, dieting and stuff or training or anything like that? Like, making your own versions of what you like to eat anyway. Yeah, so, like, yeah, I same. love Counter Burger. And they do a lot of turkey burgers, so I would make my own turkey burgers. And it's like, it's a nice way of satisfying your craving. Same with pizzas. If you make a pizza on a wrap, put tomato puree on, put all your toppings, put it in the oven, like, you know. And I know someone who eats hummus. How gas is that? That's like the proper, like, whitest person food I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. Hummus, like, hummus. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, sorry. Um, 
Did you say your favorite meal? For or? for if you're training, right? Yeah, things things I love like when I'm like proper on the diet and training, uh, omelets and turkey sausages is a great lunch mm. meal to have because really nice food. Uh, turkey sausages taste the same, but high in protein and they're they're good for you. Um, so like yeah, turkey sausages and omelets are is a great meal to have because it's. Gorgeous, but guilt-free as well. Um, if yeah, like pizza for me. If we're talking general food, like I always reach for Domino's. Um, Demimo is like one that I like if I'm eating out as well. Like it's a pizza place in East Wall, and um, that'd be my favorite restaurant. Um, yeah, I have a three-piece medium chicken select meal with Coke, <laughs> no sauce, and a side of Pringles. Thanks. That's I have that every time I come to Low Blows. Always have it beforehand. Uh, I love every, those meals. Every single week, I've, I'm in McDonald's, stuffing my fat face. You mentioned Domino's. Big, fat, sexy chicken strips from McDonald's. Oh. Give me that. Inject it into my veins. Um, the cookies from Domino's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's whopper, actually... Like. But I love, like... Do you know what I love? I love, like, say, if I, when I'm having the cookies, it'd be like when, like... My favorite time of year is this time of year because it's like NFL is on. So like I'll order Domino's like at six o'clock on a Sunday at the start of NFL. But say a pay per view is on later that night, right? So I'll save the cookies for later. So I'll pig out on the Domino's and then I'll have the cookies later on um, and reheat them just a tiny bit just so you get them hot again and reheat them then like during the pay per view. And it's like, oh, this is the best ever. This is the best food night ever. Yeah. Oh, actually, a good healthy kind of takeaway option in town if you need a Mongolian barbecue. Have you been oh, there? Oh no. So so it's uh, it's only around the corner in, oh, wait, in I have, Temple actually, Bar. Sorry. Yeah, so basically you fill up your bowl with like raw veg, yeah. meat, whatever, and they fry it in front of you. It's really cheap yeah. and it's, it's good for keeping you on track. There you go. Thanks for the question, Liam. Good. Uh, hope up the whole weight loss thing goes fucking great. Mm. Um, at Declan, ah, oh, Declan, <laughs> man, this question. I forgot about this question. <laughs> the best question <laughs> we've ever been asked. Hands down, I fucking love you to bits. At Declan Byrne, thirty-one. Who would you like to play you if there was ever a documentary about you? <laughs> <laughs> For me, it would be Rihanna. Because <laughs> she can make anything good. Or, <laughs> or else Tony Kelly. Because <laughs> he can make any wrestling match sound good. Also, I would love Kia narrating my life. Declan, I don't know why you'd want me to narrate your life. Could you imagine that? Um, he's uh, he's having breakfast. Uh <laughs> Is, uh, <laughs> what, is pour, pouring, pouring the milk in. I'd love to have Declan narrate my life just to see how he'd twist everything into Thatcher and the Shamrock Rover. It's like, <laughs> Keen leaves his house at half six in the morning to go to college. The first one to leave his house, like, Shamrock Rovers were the first team to get X amount of trophies. <laughs> or it'd be like, you know, having a cereal with a spoon. Terry Thatcher also eats stuff with spoons, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'd like that. It'd be interesting. Um, this, that, uh, this question I'd be in absolute tears. I love, <laughs> I just love how it's like, Rihanna. Like, <laughs> No, I did, like there's so many layers to yeah, it. It's like For a start, I don't think you know what a documentary is, Declan, but I like how sure you are that you do. I think he does. And do you know what? Like I'm with him on that. Because you know what my answer is? My answer is either like Eric Rowan or Bobby Lashley to with a wig. play you in a documentary. Yeah, with a wig. It'd be funny. It'd be like, they look they look nothing like me, but it'd be funny. And you'd know it's me because they'd be like, oh, Keen and Bobby Lashley would be like, hi. You know what I mean? So you'd know that it's me. <laughs> I just imagine Bobby Lashley with your voice. Like, they overdub Bobby Lashley with your voice. So what is this? Is this a crime call reenactment? Like, is that I was watching that. Happening? I was literally watching crime call for the first time in years. Last week, it's fucking, it's horrific. But it, you know, if they can put out crime call like reconstruction and stuff, why can't we have a Declan Byrne documentary with Rihanna as Declan Byrne? <laughs> I say Rihanna, Rihanna in like a Shamrock Rover's top and a Terry Thatcher scarf. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we just like it's a documentary on Declan Byrne's life, and then Rihanna's just like, I really like Shamrock Rovers. <laughs> No, but it's dull. No, because it's dubbed by Tony Kelly. So it's her, like, visually, but Tony Kelly's doing the audio on it. This is a banging documentary. If we do a GoFundMe on this, I'm, I mean, I'll, like, I'll. I, I'll, ki- I'll kick into oh, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, you, like. I'll, I'll make that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rihanna. Um, well, what? Oh, my Tony <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> so what? What are your answers? I, like, don't tell Tony Kelly what he's narrated. Just. Give it to him. <laughs> like, just put it there. Actually, I did tweet this to Tony Kelly when the question came out because it's something I've, I've like, I genuinely want to see. And he was like, "You know, I have acted like weirder shit than this." Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So, <laughs> who would you want to play you in a documentary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Sienna. 
Oh, I don't know how I would feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> that is very conflicting. I know. I know, which wow. is exactly why I would still, do it. It's still Alison K and it's still the AK-47, but it's also But like you'd have to cheer my life accomplishments. But... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Joe I download the documentary illegally and then I dub over it so it's like hey and then as soon as it says Katie Harvey you'd be like hey I'll just get Tony Kelly to do that as well yeah. so do a twofer <laughs> I would like Chris from Keenan and Kel to play me in a documentary dubbed over by Justy there you go. We don't keep doing dubs. We can just like. No, I think we need to keep no, doing dubs. No, that's it. No, that's it. No, that's it. Just, yeah. Oh, we can just mention. Justy, 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 What's your favourite, like, bit of Justy information? Like, I like how Justy was the first man to land on the moon. Um, for example, <laughs> like, that's my favourite Justy fact of the week, because we know so much about Justy, and we always get our stats right when it comes to him. Last yeah. week, he was very happy with us, like, getting facts correct. Uh, do you know Justy was the first ever Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion as well? Did mad. You know that? Yeah, <laughs> it's mad. So, fair play. Like, not a lot of people know that, but it's the truth. Justy, like Justy facts. yeah, Justy, he... Um he knows where all the good eel porn is. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, was, I was supposed to text Justy during the week. You know your Facebook memories? Yeah. One popped up from him to me about eight years ago, and it was like, obviously we'd been on a night out the night before, and it was like, hey, Katie, where did you disappear to last night? Are you alive? And I wrote back like, yeah, Justy, sorry, I went to the toilet and ran into one of my mates, and she was really sick, and then I brought her a taxi, and I took her, yeah. I meant to text him because um, I had just started hanging out with that group of people, and I was too embarrassed to say I was the person getting sick. <laughs> 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 I had to be taken home. <laughs> I, I had given Phil my number oh. and I'd given him the wrong number so no one could get in touch with me. <laughs> and they, they all thought I was dead. So <laughs> there you go, Justy. So that's like your first Justy kind of, lo- lo- like your first like f- social media interaction. Well, yeah, like we've been training for probably six months at that yeah. point but like I just start like going out with them socially and stuff and like he was like hey what happened did you die <laughs> like, no 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 I actually just drank way too much Jaeger and ended up having to be taken home by one of my mates I ran into downstairs she basically found me falling around the place and being like who are you with wrestlers okay you're too drunk you're going home <laughs> <laughs> I like as well how just he was being nice to you at that stage hey there Katie how's tricks are you alright there <laughs> just checking in on you hope everything's okay and it's like how far you've come where now it's like fuck you I hope you die <laughs> there was another comment further down where I'm like fuck's sake someone's after robbing my shoes out of my handbag this is the worst night ever Justy again underneath hey Katie you left those in our car last night were you really that bad <laughs> <laughs> yes clearly I was <laughs> so uh and I can't emphasize this enough. Thank you for the question, Declan. That is like genuinely like top amazing one question ever. <laughs> like we haven't been. If you were to rank the history of like best questions and ask low blows and like top ten ever, Declan would be at least like five of them. <laughs> like, it's I think if we're ever stuck with questions, we just repeat this one again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you can. Yeah, it'll never be the same twice. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, uh, Sean. Sean, right, we need to we need to have a word about this, right? At Sean McSaren, Sean Wokeen's third member, although this question kind of makes me doubt it a little bit. <laughs> we went from the best question we've ever been asked in Astro Blows history to the undisputed worst. And we've we've got we've had episodes of Astro Blows where someone asked us like, you know, name Irish wrestlers as animals for like the seventh time in, in a row. And I'd actually prefer that an eighth time to this. So <clears throat> the question. You're in a Sophie's Choice situation. You can only watch matches and clips of Rowan or Sienna for the rest of time, but not both. Who do you stop watching? P.S. Sorry to put you in this difficult position, Kean. Fuck you, uh, first of all. <laughs> no, I love you, really. He yeah, actually, Sean's sound, he gives me Pringles and stuff, but this is a horrible question. I actually, I thought about this, I, I actually did have to think about this a lot before answering here, otherwise I'd be like, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it, it really comes down to when you choose to ask me this question. I feel like long term I would I would um how do I word this? I the one I would watch would be Alison Kay it, like in future. But right now this second oh but then she's in NWA and I fucking love NWA right now. <laughs> Even though I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh that's a tough one. But then like think about it. Rowan is gonna beat the shit out of the rock on SmackDown, so I'm not gonna miss that, you know what I mean? Wait, hang on. Did he say just matches? Let me go back to that question for a sec. Matches, all matches and clips, fuck. Alright, uh, matches and, you see, that includes live matches though. So right now, 
Alison Kay is the NWA champion, shine champion, former Impact champion. She's proved herself that, you know, May Young Classic, she's, she's proved herself. She's proved that she's, you know, champion level in, on, in many different companies. You know what I mean? Rowan is yet to get that big, big, big fucking moment, and I need to see it. I need to experience that, and I fully believe it's going to happen despite what everyone else might think. You know what I mean? That's like my ultimate wrestling moment is like what, what Becky winning the Rumble meant to everyone else. That's what, like, that's like me, with Ro- e- even him returning. You heard the pop that came from me and only me that night. <laughs> from the next room. From the yeah. next room. So really. imagine he wins the, the big title, you know what I mean, in low blows. Uh, for, uh. <laughs> so I can't, until that happens, the answer is uh, I would choose Rowan to watch. The only problem with that is what if Alison K comes to Ireland in the meantime, you know what I mean? That's like, because that's my, like, sort of right now, while Rowan is signed, that's my dream kind of import. Above all else, I want to see Alison K either in OTT, Fight Factory, or Phoenix. One of you, if not all of you, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Booker, go watch Daddy. Um, but, yeah, um, so I'd risk missing missing out on that. Because, obviously, I couldn't. I, I, I did it again. I did it again. <laughs> I fucking did it again. Would it not just, like, fly out, Stop though? Stop massacring flies. No, like, they just came into my... It was in my face. It reminds me when uh, there was a fly flying around here. And I was, it's like an earlier episode. I was just like, get the fuck out of my face. And I was like, that wasn't Katie. Uh, just <laughs> <laughs> now you just say it. You're like, yeah, was yeah. How much out times yeah. have changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were so embarrassed that first time. Like. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, it now, just became the norm. Now I'm embarrassed when I'm nice to Katie. It's like proper, like, <laughs> yeah. full circle. Like. But, uh, yeah, so right now... I think, have, I, have I said my piece? I think I've said everything I need to say. So right now... Uh, I would choose to watch Rowan, but until once he wins the title, I'd go back to Alison Kay because I do feel like Alison Kay. I just think she'll be around longer. I just think there's. I just I don't know. I just think that it, like an end. I want to watch NWA as well. <laughs> I feel like you've really created a inner struggle here, Sean. And uh, yeah, what the fuck? You, you broke like? Arkeen. I'm really glad because I feel like it's going to keep him up all night thinking about it. <laughs> it does because I'm going to get home and be like, but look. Am I gonna miss the? I'm gonna miss the premiere of, of NWA. I'm gonna miss Alison K possibly getting booked in Ireland if it happens before Rowan wins the world title. Oh, you know shit. what I mean? So it's like, ah, uh, why the fuck did you do this, Sean? <laughs> Actually, what's your answers? I know you're not massive like fans of either, but like, you know, I, I know you've, you've been talking a lot of shit about Alison K off air because obviously, like, because <laughs> obviously, you know, an issue that you should probably sort out in the ring personally. <laughs> but like, you know, whatever. Uh, who? What would you rather do? I would probably rather watch Eric Rowan right now, just because I'm really interested in his storyline. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'll be the same. I've I haven't seen that many Alison but, K matches. Like honestly, everything I know about Alison K is related to you. <laughs> like genuinely, like you're the person who made her relevant in my life. I think I've seen a few matches of her. So considering I haven't, then Rowan by default. <laughs> but like that that means you can't watch NWA and Trevor Murdoch is on NWA. Yeah, but it means I can watch WWE. No, because you can still watch Oh yeah, you can watch. Yeah, oh yeah, watch you can watch down. NWA, but without her matches. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't think of that. Oh yeah, and then obviously the storyline Rowan is instrumental to it, so you can't see like Ro- Roman getting killed or anything. It'll be like that's just edited out. The yeah, whole- I would have missed out on that whole storyline where they tried to murder Roman Reigns and that doppelganger scene. I would have missed out on. And <laughs> he'd have been blurred out. So it would just I- be like little Rowan <laughs> and like nothing else. They're just like I just, I just <laughs> don't. Wanna- <laughs> just staring at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to live in a world where I haven't seen that that uh, doppelganger reveal. Yeah, I see you're giving good answers now. I'm kind of like, hmm. But no, I think my answer is pretty solid. Like right now, I'd watch Rowan over time, probably Alison Kay. Yeah. So, thanks that's for the question. No, no, thanks for the question. Fuck that question. <laughs> Ask a different question. <laughs> but thanks for <laughs> thanks for listening. I appreciate that aspect of it. Um, so yeah, thanks, Sean. <laughs> At Kev Fan Club, <laughs> what's the creepiest thing you could say to a stranger <laughs> while it. walking past them on the street? I had to think about this, but I think I have a good answer. What about two years? Well, I'm going to tell you about the creepiest thing that was said to me. I've, to- oh. I've told you guys. I don't think I said it on air, did I? Or maybe I did. Um, just after I had my surgery, and it was one of my first <laughs> days out, and I was, I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I love my scars now. I'm fine with them. I was pretty self conscious of them, you know couple of weeks yeah. after having them so i'm sitting at my friend we're having a glass of wine we're in a really nice bar in the middle of town like a, i've got makeup on for the first time in weeks i'm really genuinely like just you know like feeling like i'm back to normal mm-hmm. i see this guy looking at me across the table and i'm like oh god like he's <laughs> definitely coming over to talk to us and this is weird and he comes <laughs> over and he just goes i hope you don't mind me saying this but your scars look really fresh and surgical oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. surgical do you, do you mind me asking what happened? But it was like, it's such a like weird, like, like creepy voice. And I just, I 
do actually mind discussing this random stranger <laughs> in the bar. And like just turned back and like chugged my wine and immediately <laughs> ordered another glass. That's like. such a Katie thing to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the right. I, I'm with you though. I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I like dearest random. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like it was just genuinely creepy because like who walks up to someone who you know has just had surgery and is like. Yeah. I want you to know I know they're surgical scars. You know, like, I d- but I don't think you're a surgeon because I don't think a surgeon would act like that. I think you're a serial killer. I d- it, no, I'd say it could be, like, doctors can be robotic. Like, bo- doctors can be, like, bad socially and stuff like that. Like, it could be someone that's just sociopathic who got into it because they want to cut people open. Well, <laughs> but pe- I suppose people do get weird about that because I remember getting my stitches out and stuff like that, my casts off, and, like, one of the people doing it was like, oh, that surgeon does a fantastic job with the incisions, and, like, was like, her work is just fantastic, and was, like, admiring it. I'm like, how is this a thing that you admire, yeah. and, like, is, like, I don't know, you're impressed by it. Surgical. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> so fresh and surgical. You get the- this in your headphones, Rick. Surgical. <laughs> weird. weird. <laughs> and now all of our listeners do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people listen to this. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so fresh and surgical is up there with creepy for me. I don't know what could be said that's creepier. I, I think with creepiness right, A it has to be random and unexpected, like fresh and surgical. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it has to be random and like as well, it has to be like possibly sexual without being sexual. Do you know what I mean? If you just go up to someone and say, Haha boobs you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah it's not, kid, like it's not. Yeah, it's just childish. It's like it's rudimentary and stuff like that. If you want to be really creepy, like a like whispering was one of mine as well. Like <laughs> whispering is the creepiest thing. So walk up to someone on a stranger. Uh, but I think like like again, if it's kind of towards sexual, but you, they don't know what it is and it's random. Like so, if it's a random body part, for example, and it's just you walk up to someone, and you just say larynx. <laughs> if you just whisper that in her ear, they'd be like, that's like next. Step. Like, what do you mean by that? Why? Why? I think that, yeah, that'd be. You know, it's mad creepy. Oh. Like, kissing the postman's fingers as he puts in, like, the letter. <laughs> 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 and he's there thinking like oh, it's a dog or something but you <laughs> <laughs> just licking it like a dog <laughs> <laughs> that's not even my answer to the question I just that's thought I'd throw it in there that's <laughs> awful <laughs> please and do that because you know what my, like, my dogs are scared of letterboxes sometimes I will <laughs> stick my hand in first and wiggle my fingers <laughs> And like, you know, they'll, they'll lick my fingers or yeah, they'll run away. I'm going to be so creepy. What's on the other side of that door now? <laughs> just fill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Let's that's not awful. make this a that's thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, it's hard to really top that, but that's not even what you ask. You ask on the street. For me, if somebody's walking past me on the street and I want to creep them out, I just like, again, whispering is crucial. You basically yeah. just... How did sti- your head go to the letterbox? That's just what I want to know. <laughs> oh, no, Why I was that in your head? I just because I thought it'd be creepy. Like, and was it creepy? Yeah, unbelievably yeah. so. Oh, yeah, well there we like, go. We're both moving further away. Body language, is just, yeah. It's just so random that you feel like it's come up in your life before. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I saw it like on Twitter before. Oh, okay. okay, just to clarify, <laughs> <laughs> should have already mentioned that. No, no, because you can't say that. It, it did feel like it was a thought that just occurred to you, and there's so many layers <laughs> to it. <laughs> How would you get to this point? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so if somebody's walking down, obviously eye contact is essential. You need to make an eye. See, I'm a wrestling fan, so I know I'm good with like you know, being a creep. So like they come down the road and you come up the road, <laughs> that was and like you like you stare at them and like again eye contact. It's difficult, obviously, but like you have to do it. And you stare at them, and as as you're walking towards them, your breathing has to get heavier. You know, like <sighs> and then like that, like that, like that, it goes louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And then um, just as you're getting past, you basically just go up into their ear. <laughs> too sweet me bro <laughs> and then you know the you know the bullet club too sweet where it's like the one they do now where it's like underarm you know what I mean not not like over like yeah. underarm you know like a little slide a little too sweet into their hand they don't know what you're doing they can't see and they don't even know what it is anyway because they don't watch wrestling just do it to the side of their hand you're like too sweet bro too sweet bro <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and then you just walk off and that's about it um, solid yeah. solid creepiness yeah I just think I think that's, that's um, a 10 out of 10 for creepiness that's actually a really good question I like that the, the <laughs> lip licking the lip licking is the worst it, yeah, it re- oh yeah you need, you need oh yeah and after you say too sweet you have to do it again it's like uh, you do like a, a very impromptu ASMR video into their ear <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> Kane, you are ruining me tonight I hate this I hate this episode I hate it let's get rid of it burn it oh man well luckily that wasn't the last question so <laughs> as a listener if you have managed to 
to tough it out and managed to get through that. And you're still with us. First of all, I commend you. Secondly, um, you, we have one last question, so that's not going to be your parting memory with us, hopefully. <laughs> I want people's parting memory to keep your fingers out of letterboxes now. Especially <laughs> <in> corporate kids. <laughs> <laughs> I, for some reason I hope his postman is listening to this like he's a mad oh, no, low blows wrestling yeah, fan yeah. <laughs> he's like yeah he's like my postman's like I, I've been wanting to tell you this for ages now but I actually listen to low blows I'm going to listen to Arsenal blows this week like, <laughs> um, but the last question thanks a lot for that Kev but the last question comes from uh, at Irish Slam Dan who says if Irish wrestling was to have a TV show, what Irish channel and what day slash time would it be on for most success? I do have an answer for this. I'll be curious to hear yours because we do only have a few Irish TV channels. So it's like a very specific one, but I actually have a solid answer, right? I would choose UTV up north. Um, and there's a very specific reason for this because, and I don't, mean, I don't mean ITV or Virgin Media 3. It has to be UTV. With Julian. Before. With Julian fucking Oh, Simmons. I know the wrestling. <laughs> no. oh. On UTV, <laughs> oh, and, and and hasn't hasn't JDP got himself in a wee pickle? <laughs> That's the best impression you've ever done, ever, yeah, ever. That was solid, <laughs> ever. Like Sorry, yeah. Julian doing Jamie Lannister. No, I mean, no, 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 head, no, no, And I would put it in above Emmerdale because. I mean, it, it's just Emmerdale on steroids. It's just better. It's like wrestling is just soaps, but better. Yeah. So. They tune into Emmerdale, accidentally stumble across OTT or whatever Irish promotion is we're talking about, and they'll be like, oh, this is way better. And then they'll be instant fans. So that's my... <laughs> Julian Simmons is basically what, what swayed me, though, the most. Um, <laughs> what about what about you? Is there any way, I mean, would you replace the news with it, the weather? Oh, uh, yeah. I, Angeles? I, I don't feel I should, I should answer this. I was actually... I, I thought, you guys know about it, but I haven't I haven't talk, spoken about it publicly. I probably won't get into details, because I may do it again someday. I was actually in talks to do an Irish wrestling TV show before. It was close to being commissioned for a pilot, and then it stopped. It's a story I'll say for another day, um, but... I know what I do, and I'm not willing to necessarily just give it away. Quarter to six, the quarter past six, so there's a nice Angelus in the middle. And then in the middle of each, like, whatever match is on at that time, everyone stop what they're doing. <laughs> Bong, Angelus. <laughs> Why don't we do the Angelus and like, OTT and stuff? Like? I'd watch all your wrestling related TV shows. Like, I'd watch Angel Cruz doing, like, a highlight show or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'd watch, like. OTT experience with Todd Grisham. Bring back Todd Grisham. Who would be the Todd? I feel like Ben Given would be, like, the Todd Grisham of that. Like, <laughs> we were, I was looking at, we did talk about it in the WhatsApp, like, ages back, where it's like, could we do a low blows TV show? Like, if, but, like, it'd be an actual type magazine t- style show, like a Soccer AM type show, where it'd be, like, Justy and stuff like that, and then, like, doing pranks on people and so on, and that kind of way. Um, I w- I'd go better from that standpoint rather than just have a straight TV show, because I think we've done TV with Irish Whip, and it's more hassle than it's worth. I don't think it'd help. I think VOD. I think in ter- a real answer, like if say OTT were to do TV, I always say let TV companies come to you. Don't look for TV because if you look for it, then you have to spend money. You'll end up spending bomb. You have to sell out the stadium every week for your tapings, and it's an impossible job where you're just going to bleed money, and you're not going to make a lot of money in Irish TV unless they want you, and then they'll throw money at you. Well, so, you get Julian Simmons. Like, if, if that's the deal, I'm taking it. I'm not saying no. Um, but, like, yeah, it's just, just to give a real answer there as well. Sorry. My answer is going to be Network 2, uh, but that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, you're so old. Like, <laughs> who calls it that? Dustin, <laughs> Dustin and Ray Darcy. Like, <laughs> I think I'd be into a Saturday morning show. Ooh. Or, like, Sunday. No, Sunday. Like, Sunday Night Heat. Like, remember, like, we all used to watch Sunday Night Heat. And, like, you're hungover. You're at home. You got your little... Our wrestling show. Fight, like Factory, Fight Factory on like Virgin Media 2 at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning would be kind of cool. Yeah. Like, but as it is, like just recorded in like the venue and like in Sheriff Youth Club and like just the storylines and stuff like that, but a family friendly wrestling show. But it's like a community, no, TG4, like a community style wrestling event. You know what I mean? I'd want to host though, and I think I would want like. The mid car mafia to host. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, TG Carter though. Why didn't I think of that? Imagine it's like, right, uh, Key and Ben, new just little small comments, you know, uh, it's all Irish. So. <laughs> 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 it's like, that'd be great. Imagine it's like, Is Motlum Owen Richards. <laughs> it's like, Ta. <laughs> Imagine all the promos on scale go as well. Amazing. Be great. Amazing. Um, yeah, is that it? Have we covered? Yeah. That was a deadly uh, set of questions. Yeah. Really, really was. I actually enjoyed that. So thanks to everyone for your questions. Um, thanks to Rick and 
Kate, you was here as well. Uh, so <laughs> we'll also end it here. Bye.